everybody. You're listening to Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abels and Hyman. We taste better. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Naomi Nachman. I'm about all the food all the time. I love food. I love to shop for it, cook it, eat at restaurants, anything food related. I'm a kosher personal chef. My business is called the Aussie Gourmet. I give cooking classes and will travel anywhere to do them. <laughs> I cater for people for Shabbat, Yom Tov, Shavuos that just was. Parties, anytime you don't feel like cooking, you can give me a call. And I hope that you will tune in every week to hear about my latest cooking adventures, where I ate, what I ate, and what I made. But I want to hear from you too. So if you have any had any great food experiences that you've either made or ate out at, Please share it with me, Naomi, at nachumsegel.com. And thank you for all of the, all of you who do send me little uh, emails and contact me. I really enjoy it. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and through my website, uh, theaussiegourmet.com. Really excited. I've got nearly 2,000 followers on Instagram. So I'm like, yay, thank you, everybody. Um, so if you eat it, share it. We have an amazing show. It's a couple of days after Shavuot. It's just been incredible. We started off the week with Memorial Weekend, and we have not stopped eating since. It has been great. So um, we've got actually a big announcement a little bit later on the show. So I hope you'll stick in and uh, stick around and hear about all the exciting things that we have on today's show. I've got uh, our first guest is going to be Eli Hoffman. He is the grill master and owner of Five Towns Waiting. We're going to be talking to him as well as Jesse Blonder, owner and executive director. We're giving you a big title, executive director uh, and owner of uh, the Co Center for Kosher Culinary Arts out there in Brooklyn. And we have Liz Reuven from Kosher Like Me. So we have an action-packed hour. Took me a long time to get into the studio today. So I'm like still a little traumatized from that driving. I can be in New York for a very long time and still not realize that it can take you two hours to get somewhere. Ah, so yeah. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Hello. Big, Hi. Wa big waves to all my guests. Thank you all so much for coming in and uh, being with me today. Um, so we're going to talk first to Eli. How are you? Thank God. How's everything today? Yeah, good, good. So talk, um, everything's good? Yeah, it's okay. nice to be here. Okay, so I've been trying to get Eli to come in and do a show with me about barbecuing for a long time. And you know I love barbecuing. It's my favorite season, uh, the summer and spring, when we really get into barbecuing. Eli um, is also, I want to, a personal chef as well, Let's as well as a grill master, and he also runs the Five Town Waitering Service. So let's take it all back. When did you get started, and what was the first branch of the Eli Hoffman brand? Oh, well, originally it started, I was working in restaurants around the area, and I was, uh, uh, you know, helping out with summer camps and things like that, and caterers would come over to me and say, hey, could you find, we're just going to do a drop-off of some food at a local, you know, synagogue for a kiddish or an engagement party, etc. And they said, do you have any, any extra people you could work with? Because I was working, you know, with the restaurant, just as like a sushi mitsuyana at the time, or a bistro later on. And uh, I kept on bringing in waiters and eventually became bartenders. And it became, you know, later on, obviously, you know, you know personal chefs as well. So what, whenever I have a party and I need sh waitering, because I can't be always necessarily be there, especially on Shabbat, yeah. I call Eli and, and he provides me with waiters for my... Uh, for my clients, but if you're, you know, looking for waiters, you don't always need to have me there. Um, right. You can call Eli directly. It's something in a manager slash party planner slash, you know, anything that needs to get done for a party capacity. That's what I st it became to like. So, right. so I needed me to get paper goods or sodas, etc. You know. And you work with a I lot would of. Take care of a lot you work of with my, my. You work with me, yeah. and you work with other uh, personal chefs sure. um, in the Five Towns area mm -hmm. and beyond, because you do a lot of Manhattan parties. Also, we've done a lot of Manhattan. I actually what started the Grill Masters event was I had a client that was out in the Hamptons. Oh, sounds so fancy. Uh, I, except that I would pick up food every Sunday from, let's say, like a, you know, like a super stall or someplace that was like local. I think they call that now Seasons, right? It's called Seasons <laughs> now. Know, at, at the time, it was called Super <laughs> You can't teach an old dog new this was, this, was, <laughs> this was a little way back. And I could literally just drive up there every Sunday. And that's hey, you know, you could grill. Let's grill things up. And I'd been working in steak restaurants for years. So obviously, I knew, you know, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I could do a job just as good as them. And I'd go up there, and I'd, I'd do a lot of, like, grilling up there. And then I was like, why am I going all the way out to the Hamptons after two, three summers of doing this? I'm like, I'm sure there are people more locally around the five towns that could use my help. And sure enough, you have a whole community on Atlantic Beach that people from the city, they come out there, and they have their summer homes out there. And they were able to use my help. And 
And I slowly expanded to doing all of the five towns, and uh, we even do a Chalmoy Tsukis barbecue out in Hershey Park in Pennsylvania. So I've taken oh, my service cool. all the way out to Hershey, Pennsylvania, if Woo! need be. So, yeah, you know, we've done a lot of really interesting things, some corporate parties, and, and thank God it's... Last summer was very successful, and I know we've worked together with some of our ideas. We've done some fun uh, things some, together. Oh, absolutely. It was great. It was great. <laughs> I like when we do the barbecues in winter. I kind of feel like we're yeah. bringing summer a little bit closer to us. Absolutely. I mean, there's never a bad time for a barbecue, I say. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Poor Eli's had to barbecue for me. Um, it must have been mid-December. I'm thinking December 8th. That's the date that sticks to my head. It was, so. it was always right before the holidays. It was so. snowing and raining was a little oh. bit before Hanukkah and mm -hmm. he stood out there like there was a cover oh. um, and it was like a massive $10,000 barbecue. It was a beautiful piece of equipment and he's barbecuing in the dark and the rain and the snow and let me just tell you, everything came out perfect. People could not get over this guy <laughs> and his team. Your, your your team is also very, very, very professional. I try to use a lot of my friends, a lot of people I've been working for years with at restaurants and a lot of people I trust that if I'm not there, they could take care of things. And right. I, I get different ideas from different chefs and anybody I bump into, rather be at a Passover program in Vegas or San Diego or wherever I am. And I meet other chefs and I try to get their ideas and I try to incorporate them with some of my ideas and come up with different, you know, marinades for chicken, rubs for steak and, and just incorporate that all into a package and personalize it for the client so and work with him on that that sounds so good all that all that knowledge coming together you know you like inhaling everything i know when i was at the uh -huh. pesach program for ramat Doral, i just spoke to the chefs i looked around the kitchen and i just tried to inhale everything that i was watching and learning and incorporating it into oh yeah when you're in back of the house you really learn a lot being on the job and seeing people and Right. Accumulating, you know, knowledge in that aspect. So. so let's talk about a little bit about rubs and marinades. Sure. Okay. So people think you've got to put a steak in a lot of sauce for it to taste good. So t what are your thoughts on that? I'm not a big fan of steaks and sauce. There's too much caramelization. Uh, the sugar will bring up the heat quicker and actually burn it. Mm -hmm. I'll do some type of reverser. I'll actually do like a, a thicker cut of steak on the top part of the grill. Great. Can you just say that again, reverse sear? Because I know what it is and you know what it is, but... Some of our, our listeners don't know what a reverse sear and is reverse sear is. I actually found it on YouTube right. um, through one of my gourmet glut butchers, um, and and he told me it was. But explain to our listeners what a reverse sear is. It's a slow cooking technique, basically, where you're you're using indirect heat to kind of give the meat or the chicken, uh, you know, uh, even cook all around. So instead of like, for instance, you put a thicker, you know chicken breast on the grill and that will just burn the outside instead of actually cooking it all around right that happens. you would slow cook it maybe on the top part of the grill i use that you know technique a lot that shelf that comes anyway, above I, I threw my first one out because i had no idea what to do with it now i i, I happen to use that a lot and then I'll, I'll basically cook it and then i'll especially for steaks you raise it up and you give it a quick sear on each side just to give it that extra you know so you're finishing with the sear rather than starting with it it's exactly. the opposite of what we're all used to and i, I love that that it's a f almost a foolproof technique well every chef says that the best way to cook a steak is obviously medium rare and if you could cook a steak on a perfect medium rare and just give it that extra char on the outside i think that's perfect you know that's the way it should be what's your magic number for medium rare do you have a number because I know you come with your, your thermometer. <laughs> I, I actually, not always with a the thermometer. Sometimes it's all by th feel if you're, there, you're around there enough. Right. 135. You, 135. What, what, 135. So that's also my favorite number. Yeah. Even 130. I have a daughter that would like it at like 100. She likes it so rare. We she, call that black and blue. Black yeah. and blue. Black <laughs> yeah, and blue. We absolutely. say she likes it so rare. She just wants to walk a cow through a warm yeah. room. And it's that, still, that's move, it's still moving on your plate, so to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not for everyone. I can't have it so rare. Uh -huh. um, okay. So you want a nice dry rub to stop the burning of the sugars that are in sure. marinades so what would be a really easy rub for a client you know uh, or a listener that you know they, they're hearing about this it's friday morning right now and they're going to run to gourmet glut they want to buy some of the fa they have fabulous cowboy steaks there what right. would be a quick rub that they could throw up a quick rub you could put together you could borrow yourself like a basic uh steak rub like a barbecue spice rub i'd say okay um, and then you, I always like to add a little smokiness to it. So I'll put some chipotle in there, some fresh garlic, you know, some fresh salt and pepper as well. And just the basic ideas, those, those five items together, I always find are great. Sometimes just to add a little balance, you could put some Italian seasoning or oregano in there just to give it that extra little kick. But those are some great, some great things you could put together and just create a rub out of. Do you brine your chickens? I, I let them sit usually, you know. 
in like a, a freezer bag for like you know over a, a period of time i don't usually <laughs> you don't usually brine brining is the method a couple of weeks ago see kate can you believe it's now after shavuot so we did that show right after um pesach we did a mark Zomik and I did a combination of our two shows and we called it Stunt for Two. He's the stunt show and he, he's Thursday afternoon and I'm Friday morning. And we combined the two shows called Stunt for Two and we did a whole thing on barbecuing. So he was teaching us all about brining, which I didn't know. You took chicken breasts, the tops, which usually get really dry, and he brined it in water, sugar and salt. I think I want to say soya sauce, but I can't exactly remember. I think we all need to go back and watch the show again and prep for the summer. Um, and they were so moist and juicy. My mouth is watering. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. That it was really plump and juicy. And it was amazing that. Right. I like using the thicker cuts of the chicken breast, not the thinner ones, because those will dry out really quickly. Right. If you could cook, you know, cook those perfectly, they should come out really, you know, nice and, you know. I've been using delicious. it. I'm now obsessed with the dark meat chicken bottoms that sure. is like you cannot miss those the palgio the par like, yeah, yeah the pargio oh yeah. my gosh i have a sesame teriyaki marination i use oh so that's, okay that's really good. Like nice you got a lot of things going on there what about veggies what do you put on your veggies because i think a lot of people are vegetarian right um and i know you do some tuna kebabs as well right. on the barbecue um but what what do you like put on vegetables what what kind of like do you do a, a dry or a wet? You could do either. Sometimes just you need olive oil, salt, pepper, some Italian seasoning. That's all you sometimes you basically need. Sometimes you really want to keep things interesting. You know, just throw it in a bag. Throw some any type of Italian dressing you have on it and let it sit. And that Italian dressing for a couple hours. That's all you really. But need it won't sometimes. turn into a like a a pickled kind yeah. of thing where like things sit too long in dressing. No, no. As if as long as you have thicker cuts. It okay. should be fine. You don't want to cut it too thin. Right. And you do want all that flavor. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, sometimes simple, especially when I say this with steaks, if you have a really good, like, aged steak, fresh salt, pepper, olive oil, that's all you really need. You don't have to go crazy. You know? Okay. What's an aged steak? I know what it is, but a dry you know, let's aged talk, is, uh, talk they... about, to, to some of our listeners who are new into meat or not quite sure, become popular again to have aged meat. It's, it's a process of taking a roast or a piece of a prime rib and... Letting it sit out in a, you know, in different smoking, you know, processes and things like that. I'm not a butcher, so I can't go into the specific <laughs> details. I don't know all the specifics of the matter, but they age it in such a way that, you know, sometimes a month is probably your regular amount of time that it just, it creates a whole new balance. They age it in a fridge, in a climate exactly, control. Yeah, in a climate control, right. You'll okay. see it on a shelf later on, like a la Marais or something. But yeah, mm, yum. <laughs> I haven't been there in a while, but I know I love that butcher shop in the front. That yeah, that always to. gets my attention when I walk in there. You know, that's uh, okay, quite cool. something. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's It goes by so fast. I just wanted to mention one yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. Um, we're, I have a friend out in LA right now and we're trying to bring this whole idea out to LA because it could we, be a year. We have thing. a lot of California listeners. Be good. So we're trying to get a Grill Masters LA going. And uh, like I said, I, I get the the meats and I try to support local, you know, local community butchers and things like that. So that's what I'm really trying to we're do. We're all about well. local, aren't we? Right. So you try to a gourmet or, you know, the, the local lady in the community that does fruit platters or somebody local desserts. And I'm always trying to give back to somebody around the five towns so oh, that's okay. the, i think that's the best thing that, to do that's yeah. so nice and <laughs> and when you do travel to other places you use you you i'm um, stuttering you use their local also which is really nice i would do that as well and obviously you know ari white i use yeah. a lot of his stuff <laughs> we use smoking. a lot of ari white ari yeah. white's way and there's another person in the community isaac laser he's also got yep. something coming up called the hickory and he's got some great smoked items as well so mm, i know smoking is so in smoking, smoking is, is the is new so in absolutely and I, I i i offer a lot of smoking packages right okay. now so, so i um, think that's huge you know? how, do, how does someone get a hold of you eli um well they could contact me Okay. Um, like they can contact me at six four six two seven zero zero five five nine, which is also the number for the waitering aspect. Say of that again slowly. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that would be because uh, the ladies are cooking right now, so they got to wash their hands, uh, right. and grab a pen and paper. All right. That would be six four six two seven zero zero five five nine, or they can uh, look me up. Oh, I have a Facebook page. I'm working on a website now. The Facebook page is www.facebook.com. Uh, dash uh, masters of Q, just the letter Q. Okay, so. wonderful, Eli. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank I'm going to have everybody switch around. You're welcome to us uh, uh, stay and enjoy and join in later on in the conversation. But everyone's going to move up a seat. Thank you Today is musical chairs right here on the Nachum Siegel Network. We are 
on the lorry side today, having a great time. Um, I've got here, can we zoom in on this? This is my CKCA moment here. Okay, we got a nice little shot of the brand new, um, what do we call this, a poster? It's a postcard. A postcard? Yeah, that's our and new postcard. Hi, Jesse. How Hi. are you? How's it going? Yeah, good. good. Good to be back. Yeah, it's been a while. We we had you in um, New Year's Eve. Was it really? It was New Year's Eve when you came with Dini and with some Methy of our students and, and, and Chef Wiseman. Chef, Chef Wiseman. Yeah. yeah, it goes really fast the time. <laughs> We're like May something now. So <laughs> It's summer's coming. Summer's coming. So let's talk about the summer program and our big announcement that we're going to make today. Okay. Um, so here, can we have a drum roll? ZK, ZK can do a drum roll for us. It's very exciting. <laughs> you can hear it live now, right here on the Lower East Side. Naomi Nachman is going to be going back to cooking school. I'm going to be Yay. joining. <laughs> I'm going. I know it's very exciting. Let me tell you, I'm so excited about this. I'm going to be joining yeah. uh, the. Um, summer intensive cooking class yes, for four weeks. For four at weeks, that's right. Ramaz. Yes. So. You go. Okay. Well. <laughs> as you can see, I'm like a little jumpy as ex well, as, as excited as, as I always am because this is a great opportunity for me to continue my education. Yeah. Lawyers have continuing and lawyers have continuing and medic me doctors have continuing education. So. This chef right here is going to have continuing education, and I'm I'm really happy it's in Manhattan. Yes, so this is our fourth summer back at Ramaz Middle School, where we have programming. We have uh, the summer cooking intensive, which you're taking, which is a four week course. Yeah, tell tell me more about what I'm going to be learning. Oh, you're going to be learning a lot. I know a little bit of everything. The summer cooking intensive. It's a 16 day program. And it's basically a miniature version of our longer program, our certificate program, which is designed for people who want to go into the business. Right. So we take the best, some of the best aspects of that program, and we condense it down into 16 days. And it's taught by some of the chefs who teach our larger programs. Okay. So you're going to be learning knife skills. You're going to be learning... Uh, basically, we go through almost every major ingredient group. So we do a day on salads, a day on soups, a day on poultry, a day on beef, a day on lamb. Lamb, day lamb, on yay. Your favorite, of course. <laughs> uh, we do a day, uh, a unit on Asian cuisine. We do hors d'oeuvres. We do, we have fleischig and we have milchig because Ramaz has two beautiful kitchens well, up that's there. That's fantastic because you've only got in the Brooklyn school fleischig. We only, right. We have the one kitchen. So I'm so really going to get to learn milchig. You get the premium experience. Oh, I like that. Both sides of the aisle, yes. So ever, who's going to join me? Um, yeah. Who, like students? Yeah, we're going to have, well, our listeners maybe want to yeah. join. Well, I hope so. Well, we have, we, we have space for 12. It's a very intimate group right uh, i like that it's not too big it's not too big it's hands-on fully immersed so you're going to be working in this great kitchen all summer and we have a, a very diverse group if, if last year is any indication right we have people who are on break from college we right. have people who have just graduated from high school before they go away for their gap year we have people who are retired we have people who are off because they're teachers or they have off for some other reason we have people like you <laughs> bloggers and Radio hosts and celebrities. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I, yeah. I, I see your look. I went online when I was, you know, preparing for the show. Your summer program mm. is unbelievable, just across the board. Yeah. Well, Ramaz, because we have the two kitchens, it gives us the opportunity to do things we don't usually do. Right. So we also have a companion program to this. We have the what the summer baking intensive. Right. Which is 12 days, which is great because we get to do. Things that um, we do par, but we also do milchig things like croissants oh. and things like uh, things that really should be made there, right. where you won't even be able to buy them in bakeries because most places don't even make them. They don't make yeah. butter croissants. Exactly. So that's a great opportunity for people who like to bake and want to learn some really great techniques, new dishes, new items. So we've got the baking intensive, we've got the summer cooking intensive, which we offer on three different schedules. And then we have teens camps, which are mostly sold out already. That's unreal. Yeah. There are so many kids that reach out to me saying they love to cook. Can they be an oh, yeah. assistant? Can they learn with me, spend some time with me? Yeah. Sometimes they're just too young. Yeah. yeah. But I yeah. always recommend, you know, especially if they can get to Brooklyn, say from the five towns where I live, or yeah. if they're already in Brooklyn, go to you. Yeah, we have the teens camps, summer cooking and summer baking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Which you. is, we, we're offering them in both Manhattan and Brooklyn. 
So we're sold out of the teens camp in in Manhattan, but we still have room in Brooklyn, and we have still have room in the baking camps, which are great. It's uh, two weeks, and they learn a lot of really sophisticated things, things that uh, you wouldn't think teens might be able to manage, but they... We've been expanding the program since we realized that kids these days, Love to they cook. know a lot. They come in with a lot of knowledge and they come in really motivated and they want to do. So we give them the opportunity to do, to do some really cool things. All right. Are you running over the summer in Brooklyn, some of your classes? Yes. So in Brooklyn, we have our What's training programs okay. running in cooking and baking. And then we have uh, classes scheduled in the evenings, our recreational classes. Okay. All kinds of different classes and also in the summer in city for three days a week we also have we have a great lineup we've got uh, some new chefs we've got we've completely expanded the programming so there's the opportunity to take classes in a variety of different topics so you know what I, I noticed and I'm mm -hmm. gonna sign up for that class yeah the Indian class because there's no kosher Indian restaurant left there's, yeah. I don't think there's I think Shalom Bay Bombay is closed down. Oh, really? Have none it? of the none of the Indian restaurants with mainstream hekshas that I know of. I could be wrong, mm. so please forgive me. Right. Um, have closed down. So I I love Indian food, and I really want to be able to to make it to make it. You know, I've done one or two things, but to learn the basics and the concepts and the foundations of Indian cooking, and then get to eat it, it will be yeah. like at a restaurant. Yeah. But do, you, do we get to eat at every class? Oh, of course. Okay. I <laughs> remember when I thing. when I took my original chef training classes at the JCC on the Upper West Side when they had their kosher cooking school that was run by Julie Negrin. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you know her? I I know of her. I don't think okay. we've ever met. Out in Seattle, I think she's back in Seattle oh, now. Lucky her. Um. Yeah. So I uh, we used to cook like everything and then we'd just sit down and eat and have a glass of wine with everything that we made and everyone would talk about their ex experiences of what they made yeah so i that was like the yet another highlight besides learning sharing with my other chefs yes that's a big especially in our recreational classes so we spend time learning we spend time cooking and then we spend time eating enjoying all right that's the eating, best part drinking exactly okay so those classes are great you, even if you're working this summer, they start at 7 p.m. so you can get off work. Right. If you're looking for something fun to do during the week for just one night, or we have short series as well. So you don't have to commit to a program that's 16 days, of course, unless you want to. Yeah, it's actually perfect because you're off on Fridays. Right. It's 10 to 2 every day, right? right? it's not too early. So it's not, it's no. not, I can put a kid on the bus. Exactly. Um, To go to day camp, hop on a train to Manhattan because I'm never driving here again. <laughs> And then take a train back or drive home or however. There's still plenty of time to meet a bus on the other end. From, exactly. From day yeah, camp. and that's why we we do it special. So people, we try to make it as convenient as possible. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I totally said that. I'm so excited. You know what? It's been a, a big hit that I've noticed. What's that? Your competitions, your couples competition. Yes. That is so, crazy. I was yes. on the site last night. Everything sold out. Yeah, well, we have, it's called Date Night, I think you're referring to. Yeah, which date, is a class. It's date Night. It's hilarious. It's a class for couples, and we have two formats. One is a chopped style competition, mystery basket kind of thing, and then we also offer it as uh, a seasonal menu where you create dishes that our chefs develop, and then we, you, we guide you through making them, and then you sit down and enjoy them. And we also do both of those as uh, private party options. And we've get, been lately getting a lot of people from your neck of the woods in the five towns for anniversary parties, birthday nice. parties, uh, bridal showers, you name it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've been doing something a, different. a lot of bridal showers lately. Well, yeah. it's the season, you know. Exactly. The sphere is over and everyone's getting close to that. We're basically in wedding season. Yeah. The bridal showers are always fun. Sometimes the brides are completely intimidated by what's going on around them. And <laughs> sometimes they know more than I do. So Exactly. Funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I thought that was really nice that you have that couple's night. I said to my oh, husband, it's... you want to do a cooking class together? And he's like, how about you cook and I'll eat? I'm like, mm, nah, <laughs> <laughs> no way. That's Sometimes like... we get couples that's the opposite. We get the man who really wants to cook and the woman is not interested. Yeah. And she's drag he's dragging her okay. to the class. <laughs> Please make me some food. Exactly. <laughs> that's very funny. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit now. I know we're jumping forward, okay. but what, talk to me about the fall and what people are thinking about now, what they want to do about the fall. We saw, lined up the fall classes, people that want to. Well, fall is like, fall is, 
our busiest time, back to school. So right. in the fall, our professional programs, they're nearly booked already. Right, that's why I wanted to bring it up because ahead. they need yeah. to think about. So tell, talk in more in depth about this. If you're thinking about going to cooking school, right. um, or you've just come back from Israel and you can't decide what your major is yet and you're not quite ready to start college and you want to go into the cooking industry. Well, we have our programs are unique. They're short-term intensive style programs. People take them for a variety of reasons. We have one in cooking and we have one in baking and pastry arts. Right. And if you're looking to get into the business, it's a great fit. If you have the time and want to explore in really great detail this passion for cooking, it's a really great fit. So how many months is this? Because we know the summer intensive is like four weeks. Four weeks. This is like four months, right? Or three um, months. It runs, bec- you know, we, we jump around the holidays, obviously. So I think when it's all said and done, it's at least 12 weeks. So start in early Seriously? September, end in sometime in December. Um, but it's only four hours a day, so you could work it in with something else. And we're and I think we're all we're also going to be offering the culinary program on a part time basis, two nights a week. So that will run probably six months. But it's you can work it into your schedule if you're in college or if you work. We've had a lot of people who are have full careers, full professions, or students, or dentists, doctors, and they podiatrists. Want- right. Uh, did, is that right. what Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Dr. McGullen? Dr. Jonathan, yeah, McGullen, exactly. he's a foot surgeon and, and, and he came and, and he became, became a chef. Yeah, he, he we had him program. on the show. Yeah. Um, so really, if you're just interested in food, I like learning. Besides eating, I, le- I like to learn what's behind, what right. goes on the and plate. and that's what it's about. Exactly. And the butchering. I came to visit Jesse the other day um, <laughs> to do some came on a good shots. day. I came on a great day because they were butchering lamb. Mm-hmm. And I got to watch these... Maybe there were six or eight guys mm-hmm. that were in the class. This class, for some reason, was all male. Right. But you never know who's going to sign up. Exactly. Um, for the class. And they were butchering lamb. And we watched Chef Avram Wiseman like, mm-hmm. show the guys and guide them through Frenching and ca- fat caps. And exactly. It yeah. was like, I can't wait to learn how to do this. But they have like three days of lamb. <laughs> We do, days. we do, I believe it is three days, and we, we take racks of lamb, whole racks, un, unfabricated, as we say, and they, they, we use every aspect because lamb is so expensive. As a chef, you have to learn how to make use out of every drop. So we take the fat, we save the fat for making sausages on another day, mm. and then we take all the trimmings and we create lamb burgers, which are out of this world. And then we, of course, we make the racks of lamb. Which is, uh, I was talking to Liz before, costs about $8 every time you take a bite. A bite, yeah. So my daughter's uh, just came back from Australia. Uh-huh. Um, she was there for her, uh, she's in SKA High School, Halbs Girls High School. Um, and she brought back lamb chops. <laughs> in a suitcase. <laughs> in a suitcase. Right. You're, allowed to dec- you're allowed to bring Australian meat into America. I've, N- I've said this before on air, so I'm like, I need my Australian lamb. <laughs> Next time, I think she should bring the whole animal. The whole lamb, <laughs> yeah. Bring it to the school. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. That would Bring be a funny. sheep on the yeah. plane. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll try it. If they stop <laughs> us at customs, we'll know that it doesn't yeah, work. Exactly. And she also brought me back Vegemite. I know everyone's so excited to hear that there's more Vegemite in this country, but yeah. What's the appeal of Vegemite? You have to have it from birth or you just think it's disgusting. Well, how, do you, how do you consume it? Okay. <laughs> what do you do with it? Nick, when I come to cooking, are you going to be there on, on oh, in the... In I'll the be tent? there, yeah. Okay, so it, I'm going to make you a Vegemite sandwich. Okay. I wish I would have bought it with me. Okay, ZK, you've never had a Vegemite sandwich with me. No, no I don't think Nachum's had either, for sure not Miriam. Okay, we're going to have to have a Vegemite sandwich party. I'm going to bring some, Liz. <laughs> Um, Vegemite, it looks like black tar. Right. It almost smells like black tar, but you have it on a piece of toast with tons of butter and okay. you smear some Vegemite. I'm not going to say black tar and it's delicious. It's very salty. You just, if you don't like salt, it's not for you. Is it fermented? I want to say yes, but I really have no clue. What is it made from? Yeast extract. It smells like beer. It actually smells okay. like beer. It's, it's got tons of B12. It's ha- actually really healthy for you, but you have to get past that. You know, I'll try it. Yeah, I'm going to. I think I'd like it. Yeah, if you like salty and you, the, the smell doesn't offend you, you're good to go. Especially if you take some butter and you smooth it out a little bit. Well, everything with butter is good, right, yeah. guys? Yeah, exactly. I know, everything is butter with good. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I hope that you can stick around. Uh, we're going to loop Liz into Musical our chairs, okay. com- conversation. No, you can sit there, Liz. I think so long as ZK says we're all good, we've got you on camera. Hi, Liz. Hi, hey, honey. How are you? Yeah, good. Okay, we're just checking sounds and mics and all that. 
Okay, how so you doing? I would like to taste Vegemite. Okay. I'm I, I like salty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to bring some next time we get together. Yeah, that'd be delicious. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> lo- local, can try it. Yeah, you I'm try, open. You're, I, I, see, I like yeah. that. My husband, when married almost 22 years, has not tried it. Some of my kids have, seven, some haven't, but I think the smell, you have to just be able to go beyond You have smell. to push past it. <gasps> yes, it's so good, though. It's so good. Oh, when I was pregnant with my oldest daughter, I had tremendous cravings for it, so my mum sent some to me. But otherwise, interesting. Know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so busy week, right? right. Shavuos. How Very was Shavuos? Yontif was good. Very busy. Yeah, you know, preparing um, a post for kosher like me on Shavuot. You know, there were so many fantastic roundups out there with all of my blogger friends, kugels and quiches and blintzes and all of that. I decided to do something that would be, you know, would have cheese in it, but that wouldn't be so intensely fattening and decadent. I um, turned to our friend Melinda Strauss. Woohoo, Melinda Strauss! And I decided kitchen, to... Kitchen-tester.com. Right. And I, deci- and I posted a recipe that she had done that was shave- a shaved zucchini salad mm-hmm. with some delicious cheese. And I really liked that idea for Shavuot because, you know, I mean, I love a Lakshan Kogel as much as everyone, but... You know, I don't really want to pay for it for months afterwards, which <laughs> seems to be the way it happens. So yeah. um, I loved the fact that zucchini's not in the farmer's markets yet, but it will be any minute. Any minute. And then when it comes into the markets and it's flooding our markets, you know, no one knows what to do with this kind of enormous abundance of it. So I love the idea of shaving zucchini. So we went with a salad like that. So that was my uh, Shavuot post. And I also did... Um, Really delicious shakshuka with very mm. low, I mean, eggs from um, a coop up the street from me. Oh, that is too cool. She, Liz lives in Connecticut, so she got access to chickens. Yeah, lots of chickens. Yeah, not, not so many in five towns. No. Why <laughs> right, do you like? No chickens. Yeah, Gourmet Glad has chicken. Yeah. Egg, has eggs. Costco. We like went Costco to... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we went to... Um, my friend who um, is a beekeeper who has a beautiful apiary up the street from me in Connecticut. What did you call a bee? The the place where you're raising bees and making bees is called an apiary. Cool. Yeah. And did she, you know that? Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Wow. Yeah. And she has um, hens that lay eggs that are all different colors. You know, I'm going to post it on. I'm going to post that egg picture later on Instagram. Okay, so go to uh, Liz's Instagram page. Yeah, uh, kosher, everything is kosher like me. Kosher like me. See, and I'm also I'm Naomi Nachman on some things and Ozzy Gome and others. So I have to like make right. make try to keep it simple. Yeah. So anyway, she has these eggs that are like almost almost olive green beautiful robin's egg blue she has some that are almost yellow some that are creamy some that are almost orange and brown so i like to go to her for eggs if i know i'm going to shoot the picture before i make the dish so we made a dish with um some beautiful um local cheese and these gorgeous eggs we did a great shakshuka we had guests all weekend and we just had a great time cooking and being outside it was a beautiful weekend yeah it yeah. was really thank thank god because i th- yeah. thought it might rain so you are listening to table for two with naomi nachman on the nachman siegel network our show is also heard on arut sheva english radio the show is sponsored by abels and hyman we taste better so we're talking a little bit about uh dairy and then i put in my amazing abels and hyman product because we actually also besides having tons of great dairy meals had a barbecue right uh, on monday for memorial day slash shovel what we carefully carried our little flame outside and we turned on the gas and keeping with you know all the laws of you know transferring a candle right. and lighting a fire so um we did not sometimes it blows out by the wind but we it was really nice the other day so um we did some um abels and hyman hot dogs um the no nitrate ones were unreal and nice. i kind of felt like a little healthier because they had no nitrate so <laughs> we're gonna call it the healthy hot dog uh, but yeah, there was a lot of fun stuff going around um, on um, for on all the different blogs. I love that we have all these different, besides fabulous cookbooks. Have you seen the new one by Daniela Silva? I have not seen it yet. So, oh, I'm going to bring it. Oh yeah, I would <laughs> to love to show it to you. It, yeah. It's really lovely. Have you seen it? I haven't. It's a really lovely cookbook. Very modern, fresh, crisp look. What's it called? Um, the Silver Palette by Daniela Silva. The yeah. Silver Table, the maybe. Si- 
Am I saying it wrong? The, well, the silver palette. The silver platter. The silver, the silver platter, platter. Because the silver platter palette. The, is something else. Is, the silver yeah. platter. I do apologize, Daniela. It's a beautiful book. It's written in conjunction with Noreen Galette. Oh. We're going to have them both on the show. Hopefully, we're trying to coordinate with Miriam Pascal from Art Scroll, who's overtime cook, who's busy working overtime for her cookbook. I feel like there's so much going on in the foodie world. Um, she had some beautiful salads in there also. Just like a lot going on besides the great books, the great blogs. You almost sometimes don't need books if you, you know, there's great blogs. And, and even, um, you know, the newsletter that um, Kosher Culinary puts out. Yeah. Um, if you want to sign up, you want to just well, give that a mention. KosherCulinaryArts.com. We send out a newsletter every week. We feature cookbook authors and bloggers like like yourself, yeah, as well as recipes from our own chefs. So every week you get it in your mailbox right when Shabbos sends. And yes. we also do the the special ones for the holidays, like we just had one for Shavuot. Right. Yeah. Um, I saw you had a very nice one go up by Shlomo Schwartz. You know, you know Shlomo, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Shlomo. He did sabich. A sabich. sabich salad. One of my I favorites. Love, yeah. I love sabich. That we is love like sabich. my my favorite. Um, sabich and shakshuka. Oh, <laughs> eggplant city. Yeah. <laughs> I try to throw in roasted eggplants now always in my salads. I always try to have a whole bunch just in the fridge, just roast yeah. it up in a Ziploc bag, and I just throw it every oh, night into a salad. You. Yeah. And I used to deep fry them. I know I'm terrible. No. Oh. But no, now I started um, roasting them in the oven 400 degrees with salt and olive oil till they're softened and brown and much, much healthier. You know, eggplant is one of those ingredients that people are a little bit intimidated by because yes. they don't know whether to salt or not to salt. And why is that so bitter on my tongue? Sometimes, you know, your tongue sort of sizzles with, um, what is that that makes your tongue sizzle? Do you know? On the eggplant? I'm yeah. not sure. It's probably some kind of enzyme. Yeah, it's an enzyme. Like so, I've never tasted bitterness in an eggplant. Yeah. So people are a little bit baffled by certain ingredients, even ingredients that we eat often, like eggplant. So um, on Kosher Like Me, I do a series called Seasonal Snippet. Yes, so we're going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, and, and eggplant is coming up because I think that um, we need to understand how to handle eggplant better so that we don't have, you know, a mouthful of seeds or that enzyme, black. En black or that enzyme feeling on your tongue, which I get often. Yeah. So, yeah. I love eggplant. Yeah, no, I do too. So my my I may, I may have different ten different salads that I make um, with with um, I have think I have, on my blog I think I called it crazy for eggplant or something or excellent eggplant and I gave out three recipes on eggplant. But I actually want to take a break to do our what's for dinner segment and it's all about zucchini chips. Um, I made these on Yontif. They were an excellent excellent hit. It's um, I found it in a magazine called Southern uh, Living. Uh, it's one of my favorite magazines. I'm not sure if you guys have heard it or if you get it. I know what it is. I love it. Everything there has worked. And I kind of like did my own version of it. So um, I took a half a cup of panko crumbs. So I just, I'm sorry, I didn't say that our What's for Dinner segment is sponsored by Gourmet Glatt. I did not mean to leave that out. Um, and thank you to Gourmet Glatt for always being a big sponsor and friend of Table for Two on the Nachum Siegel Network. Um, so I took uh, like about a half a cup of panko crumbs and then I used um, some fresh basil leaves. So many of my friends are growing basil in their back gardens. I'm not buying it anymore. I'm just going to, I just go to their house and snip some. It's so easy to buy actually in Manhattan right now. They're selling on, um, in pot plants, right? Potted plants of, sure. of, of basil. So you can even just keep it home on, the, on your back deck. Um, some salt, some grated Parmesan cheese. I took a half a pound of round zucchini, half a pound of zucchini. And I cut them into quarter inch rounds. And then I had olive oil and cooking spray. So I mixed everything together. Like um, in the food process, I did the the salt, the basil, um, and the and the um, panko crumbs. Um, and then I added in the cheese. Um, so I had this kind of like a breadcrumb mixture. And then I uh, took my zucchinis and I just because they give off a little bit of moisture naturally. I dipped the zucchini into the to the um, parmesan panko crumb and then i just put it on a cookie sheet and i sprayed it with um the vegetable cooking spray or canola cooking spray you can do olive oil cooking spray and then i put it the oven lined on a cookie sheet with parchment paper for 400 at 450 degrees like in 10 minutes so were crispy chippy cheesy delicious zucchini so and how thinly do you slice those so i did it about a, <coughs> a quarter of an inch yeah. mm. i don't know like this <laughs> for those who of you are watching can watch our show online at nachamsegel.com or anytime on 
YouTube on Nachum Siegel Net. I did it right. <laughs> um, you can watch us live um, or anytime. Eli and Liz and Jesse tell everyone that, you know, all your friends that they can watch our show because yeah. we have so much fun. Yeah. You can, it's listening, but also watching, you know, we're using all our senses. Um, so, okay. Um, what else is coming up into seasons? I know what j ramps have just gone by. Right. So, um, well, pretty soon we have berries coming mm -hmm. and, you know, there's nothing like fresh berries. Pick your own berries. Um, if you can do it, nothing compares to that experience doing it with your kids. Of course, it will turn them onto berries forever and ever. So, uh, we'll be writing about, um, strawberries and believe it or not cherries grow in connecticut we'll be writing about pick your own cherries and what to make with them where do people go to do pick your own where can they find i know in long island you can go to lewin farms i've been there right but where can they go right. where else if they don't want to you, you don't know live in five yeah when we when we write that post which will be close to the time that you can actually pick we're going to be um we're going to be using a link that will help people to see a, um, it will guide people to a site that will tell them where they can pick anywhere in the country. Oh, nice. So it connects to farms all over that have pick your own. And, um, you know, thank God we have readers now all over the place. So although I'm in Connecticut and in New York City, it's very important now for me not to always say, well, this is where you can pick in Connecticut. Right. That's why I say I don't want right. to tell people where to pick in Long Island. I know there's tons of places in New Jersey right. that friends have mentioned. Right. There are people picking all over. So um, so we have, we'll give a link so okay. that people can find out. And where then maybe also pick. some recipes because, you know, yeah. people are going to go pick all these strawberries. There's only X amount of strawberries you can eat in a week. Right. I did strawberry shortcake for the first time this weekend. And? And it was so delicious. Of course, it was a pleasure to make it milchik. I really don't want to make a biscuit with margarine. I, right. know, I know it can be done, but I really want to taste the butter. So we took advantage of that and we whipped cream and we found out, we read, my daughter and I, she's a great cook. So when she, I was telling Jesse, no. Was like, yeah. I was telling someone else, when she comes <laughs> home, we prepare, uh, you know, email exchanges for a week, planning what we're going to be cooking for the weekend if she comes home on Friday, because we um, cook a lot together and very easily. So we found out that when you whip cream, if you put in, this is so weird, a teaspoon of cream cheese, what? it will help the cream to stay stable and thick. So we actually transported that whipped cream to a friend's house for dinner. And when we opened up the container, it had not liquefied at all. Big tip. Whoa. That's really well, interesting. I never heard that one. Yeah, can we so have the breakdown? We can have another What's for Dessert. Let's call it What's for Dessert segment by Gourmet Club. Okay, re repeat that again. Yeah, so. How, can you try to figure out amounts for us? Isn't that so, so interesting? I know it's not so good for a barbecue session, well, but. It's very, it's, very, <laughs> it's, it's very milchic, right? I mean, I haven't whipped um, coconut cream have you done that Joe? i've never done coconut yeah, cream jesse worked? have you done it yeah we've done it at the school a few times yeah, trader's joe trader joe's i don't know if it's kosher but i haven't bought it yet but it's um coconut cream it says whipping cream coconut oh cream. that i haven't tried but what i've tried is you take a can of coconut yeah. milk you put that in the refrigerator the cream comes to the top and that can be whipped <gasps> and expanded and then you have coconut flavored well, it's coconut cream but it's whipped right that so that works well what, oh, yeah. what, what did you say? Can we give, uh, Eli, take that purple microphone-y thing. <laughs> okay, uh, say that again. <laughs> yeah, I use that in my bartending menus, coconut cream. It just it gives a nice, like if you do a sharpness with a little bit of strawberry makes sense. I love that idea. Great. It works yeah. out great. So, so like a pina colada Miami Vice type of idea. Yeah. <laughs> nice refreshing Must. summer drink. Yeah, so we went full <laughs> throttle, <laughs> like full throttle dairy, of course. So we, one cup of heavy cream uh, results in two cups of whipped cream and for that one cup of cream we threw in to my mixer one teaspoon of cream cheese it was crazy it's not even a lot it's like no, nothing it's like, nothing. It's like a 164 and about and i packed that in a cooler to transport it along with these you know dairy biscuits that we made we made like very traditional strawberry shortcake and the cream was stiff and beautiful able to be spooned on after do you add like in sugar or vanilla i do into I do. that yeah sugar and vanilla i would have done how about lemon zest can we do that what do you think about that lemon i've never tried it but yeah, I, I like lemon i think it would work or lime. I, I wouldn't make it collapse i don't yeah, think i don't know what it would do chemically but um yeah we just did sugar and lemon i mean uh, sugar and vanilla 
Sugar and vanilla. Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, yeah. right. I've seen that. Right. So I saw this trick on YouTube and I thought, this is going to be great. I'm going to do this trick on you um, at a cooking demo that I'm doing for a bridal shower. I did um, a crepe cake. I made crepes. And then rather than making traditional blintzes, I showed them you stack it between layers of dolce de leche and jam and nuts and whipped cream. Thought, yummy, it's delicious. So I thought, okay, I'm, I was going to whip the cream by hand, like I usually do. But um, I saw this trick on YouTube. I was a little disappointed. You, I took a mason jar. It had a mason jar. Wow. And they put in the cream. Did you guys see it? And then you add in your vanilla and your sugar. And then you shake it for 40 seconds. Nothing happened. <laughs> I was wondering. I said, oh, God, I was so sad because well, I thought it would be such a cool trick to teach young brides that trick. How could it happen? You're not whipping any air into it. I, I right? couldn't understand. But they, on YouTube, on, on Facebook, it was a Facebook. It worked. So I think there was a little too much editing there. But So you have to actually be careful with some of the stuff. that you see these great videos now, like... 30 second clips of videos with, of food which and recipes, which I love that idea. But you have to be careful. They don't always work, which is fine. And as a chef, you know, sometimes things don't work. When I did my cooking demo at Gourmet Glad a couple of weeks ago, I was showing everyone my brilliant, how good I am at making crepes. And then my crepe pan got too cool and it didn't really work. And Miriam finished it off and she did a great job. But I couldn't do that on air because, you know, sometimes things at home fail. Yeah, they fail. Yeah. It, sometimes it's what do they call a hashtag epic fail. Yeah. You have those every once in a while and that's perfectly normal. You should not be deterred away from cooking if you have a big flop. Right, guys? I mean... Yeah, that's part of the fun. You learn from your mistakes. Yeah, and, and people love and then to you hear eat them. and they love to hear them about the mistakes. It's fun to post those pictures. People love that. Disasters. Yeah. <laughs> Disasters in the kitchen. We can make a little uh, Facebook group from that. Disasters yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. Um okay, so what else can we look forward so, to from you? Uh, um well, I, uh, we're working on a pickling post because, and it's so great because we're in the Lower East Side. So, you know, the Lower East Side, of course. Home of the pickles. Right? Pickles were sold from barrels here. Um, my grandparents were here when they came from Poland. Um, pickles were cheap. They were sold, I think, on a stick. Yeah, and, I'm, not, I'm not even sure. Um, there were uh, families who were not Jewish who didn't want Jewish kids coming home to eat. I mean, to not to eat, but to visit their kids because they smelled of garlic. You know, it was like really like fashtinkin. But um, <laughs> but um, anyway, we're working on a pickle post, and I love um, that. Very excited to be speaking with Sandor Katz. Who's who that? Is, um, he's the big the big pickle guy. He's a, totally into fermenting. Um, fermenting is a whole show in itself, yeah, isn't it's it? Yeah, it's a big it's a big thing. Well, f fermenting and pickling are. Um, related but different but um, we're setting up an interview with him now and um, you know everything that you want to pickle will be in your farmers markets imminently I mean right now we really only have greens in the farmers market what do you mean by greens well like celery or lettuce no or? I mean you know spinach and butter lettuce and um, there's beautiful arugula in the markets right now and the colder the nights the less bitter the arugula. So, you know, if you love arugula, but sometimes wow. it gets super sharp, it's because you're, you're, you have warmer nights. But right now we still have cool nights. And in the fall when we have cool nights, that arugula becomes more mild when it That's gets the so cold. so interesting. I know, it's crazy. So should we keep our arugula in the fridge when we buy it in July when it's hot at night? Well, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, that I, I think once it's picked, it doesn't. I don't yeah. think it's going to affect the flavor. But speaking of, I, I'm doing a post this week on what to do with your farmer's market purchases, how to store them, how to manage them, how to wash them, what to do with them, with a great recipe coming up for I'm a so fresh excited about that. pea soup. So, And it's not the same when you use frozen peas. I know it's very tempting, but this is a fresh pea soup. And maybe of greater interest even is what you do with all that stuff that you buy at the farmer's market because there's nothing worse than buying scallions and then reaching into your vegetable bin and finding that they're gooey and slimy. Because you left them for too long? Right. You have to know how to handle these things. They aren't all handled the same way. I, I love this whole crop sharing. I've, I know I've spoken about uh, in, in the uh, fall season. I know there's something called, I want to say golden earthworm. Am I right? It's out in Long Island. I don't know. And a friend of mine, Naomi Ross, um, uh, Jewish cooking concepts. She does it, and one time she was away, and she gets like she has to go like every Thursday. She so has to go. You're talking about a CSA, a CSA, of a community CSA. supported agriculture. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And I think the, her, the one she uses is golden earthworm. I have to check it yeah. out because I want to actually join it. 
Um, and she said she was going away for Sukkot or something. She offered me her crop share for that week. That's fantastic. And I went and I picked it up and it was unreal. I, I never made rhubarb before. Yeah. So I made rhubarb. Uh, no, it wasn't rhubarb. Swiss chard. Mm. And they came in beautiful colors. With bright red stems, right? So beautiful. All different colors. Yeah. Like there were, So I put on Instagram, what do I do with these? And everyone was sending me through Instagram like, um, posts on how to cook it. So it was was amazing. Well, there are many great things about subscribing to a CSA. I mean, the first thing that's really great is you're supporting your farmers. Yeah. So they get the money up front for the share that you're purchasing. And as a cook, you're going to be responding to what's in season. And so instead of going to a supermarket on a Thursday with a list and with recipes that you've thought about, you are responding to the ingredients. So if in your box that week you have um, ramps, <laughs> I know. Ra I never had a ramp. Right. And you've never made ramps or you have an abundance of, well, here's the one that we really don't like, but we try to like kohlrabi. <laughs> I bet you know what to do with it. But, you know, you have to respond to the, what's in Is season. Is that in season right now, kohlrabi? It, it will be coming. I don't know when it happens. I try to ignore I it. Think, yeah. <laughs> it's coming up. I'm Beware. Coming. It's coming. I put Watch it in my out. soup. I put it in my soup. Yeah. Um, as a nice flavor my mom told me to do that yeah it's, it's, a, it's a i think it's a root vegetable yeah. yeah but as a csa subscriber you know you're doing a lot of great stuff especially you know your food is going to taste better because yeah. it's those ingredients were harvested a day or two prior to you receiving your box or picking up your box and there are csa pickups all over the city so and some of them are still um, available to be purchased so, right, they, they only sell X amount per season right, or so per they, year. Right, so they get sold out. And it depends on, you know, your hours of work and your location where you can make this most convenient because, you know, schlepping a box on the subway is not that easy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how does one find out more about CSA? They can just go to CSA on Google and find out. Probably Google CSA yeah. and your area, you know, CSA Five Towns or CSA Connecticut or CSA Fairfield County, Connecticut. Or Brooklyn. Yeah. Or Brooklyn. They're all over the place. They now. are. There's a lot of options. A lot of farms are doing it. It makes sense for the farmers and makes sense for the for the purchaser. Do you base a lot of your menu planning for the school through seasonal vegetables also? We try to. In, in our case, uh, it's just basically one of the staff members going out to the market to get. Um, but we also have a curriculum we have to stick to. So right, right. Unfortunately, I would love to do more. And we, we incorporate the seasonality aspects in our, in our recreational classes, our date night menus, right. our cocktails that we make. So... Uh, in th in those cases, we say, okay, what's fresh? What's in the market? And it makes such a big difference when something is fresh as opposed to being in storage for who knows how long. You know, right. it, it makes such a difference. I don't plan anymore. I just go to the market. I shop my local farmer's market in Westport, Connecticut. It's all organic. It's all first-tier selling, which means that the goods are grown in Connecticut and sold um, within, I don't know how many miles, 100 miles, whatever, 100, 200, it doesn't really matter that much. But I don't go with a shopping list and a plan. Even if I'm having guests on Friday night, I don't go with a plan anymore. I mean, I might know that I'm, I want chicken. Right. I don't, I don't. And chicken soup. You know, I don't look up a recipe for a salad and then struggle to look for greens that aren't being harvested right, right. now. There's no point. You go with what's in. That's and right. everything picked at prime. That's right. It's almost, it does the work for you. Right. It's That's the way right. God intended it, right? Yeah. We weren't supposed to eat certain things at certain times, I it's guess. It's true. Well, that's it's a recent development, probably 20th century. Before that, you didn't have the option. That's right. right. You didn't have the trucking, the shipping, the, or the refrigeration. The refrigeration. Right. But we did have pickling. We did right. have pickling and charcuterie. <laughs> we did. We had charcuterie. charcuterie. Right. Fermentation. <laughs> right. Right. Eli does a lot yeah, of... I'm big into fresh products. Huge. I use, like using fresh garlic on things and... Uh, it's, it's amazing. And I think people appreciate it. It's like something coming yeah. right off. Right My there. stomach is rumbling so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we always talk about food being a food show, but all this fresh ingredients and, you know. Right. I, 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 can I just ask you, I, I had a ramp. Um, I was at Paradise the other day with Melinda Strauss. Mm. We did a 12-course tasting menu. It was uh. insane. Um, but what is a ramp? What is it? I, I'm hearing it all over, like more this year than I ever had in the past. Is it an onion? What What exactly? I'd like to see it in its raw state. You want to do it, Jesse? Well, I have my theory. I, you know, I think I think a ramp is a is a is a young onion, a spring onion. A cousin is that of right? an onion. I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, basically, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I've seen them pickled. You see them fresh in the farmer's market. Basically, in the spring, everything's first starting to come up the ground, from the ground, so you get different flavor because it's younger. And I think that a ramp is just a young onion of some kind, okay. I believe. Okay, in the onion family. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they had some pickled ramps, but they had so yeah. many components on this plate of fabulous food that we ate um, yeah. that it was hard to, you know... Distinguish. Distinguish. I like to see it and try it raw and then, you know, come up with my own thing. But yeah. it's almost it's a very short season. Very. It's one of those yes. things that has a very Fleeting. short season. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I also want to mention that yeah. um, on Kosher Like Me, I write, about, I write about events that I think my readers should know about. And um, I am always looking at what's at the Center for Kosher Culinary Thank Arts, you. Jesse School. And uh, coming up this week, I think we are uh, giving people a big heads up on the Father's Day grilling class. Well, Father's Day, we have a Father's Day barbecue class, yeah, which cool. is coming up on Father's Day. And... It's a great, I mean, we get people in that class who aren't fathers, but fathers are more than welcome. <laughs> Everyone is welcome. It's a, it's a grilling class. So we do a variety of different dishes. We put up a grill on the back. I'm not sure if we're supposed to be doing that, but we do it anyway. We won't tell. <laughs> and it's great. We have a special chef who comes in who's uh, very skilled in grilling and barbecue, and it's a delicious class. And it's a it's a great way to spend a Father's Day. Um, yeah. Recently, we posted about the babka baking class. I mean, you know, yes. you've done babka baking and a lot of it, and you've also done um, traditional Jewish desserts like a broader. Haven't you done classes that are a little broader? We used to try to do babka bagels and uh, and ragulach right. in one class. This time we just did babka, and I was speaking to my chef, and I said, how did we ever do all three in one? So now we separate them out. The bagel class will be coming up in the fall, and I highly recommend it. Yeah, I've done bagel making. It's so much fun. It is, and when it comes out from the oven, fresh. We also make bialis fresh, which you never see anymore, right except for Kosars. Right? Kosars right up here on Grand Street. Right. We just bought something on the walkover. From <laughs> yeah. The D. yeah, it's a real treat. It's nice. a real treat. Yeah. Very nice. So, Liz, we got lots to hear about from you. So, go to kosherlikeme.com or on Facebook or on Instagram. You can find uh, Liz Rubin and all her exciting culinary adventures. Uh, you can find Jesse Blonder and all the exciting. I'm just going to, here's my CKCA um, postcard. Exactly. It's bigger than a postcard. That's why I'm like a little. It's a sumo sized postcard. It's, a, it's on. That's what they call yeah. it. I like this on steroids. Um, and I'm going to be so excited to join your cooking school. We're also going to be, the final announcement would be, I'm going to be having a segment on table for two. It's going to be the last 15 minutes of the show. It's called Naomi Goes to Cooking School. <laughs> I know it's so original. What can I say? <laughs> but I want it to be exactly what it is. And I'm going to be sharing everything I've learned along the way from the students that I meet to the chefs that I meet to the dishes that I make to the skills that I've learned. And I'm going to be inviting everyone down to at some time or another to talk and share all our experiences that we've had together. Um, I really recommend people come join me and, and the whole team of uh, at uh, CKCA uh, up in Ramaz. Uh, I know they have the, you know, the stuff going on in Brooklyn, the program in Brooklyn. Yes. But I think it's really nice to be in the city. In, 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 uh, yeah, it's more accessible for some people. We realize that. also that, that Fleischik and Milch kid. I love it. I, I think, it's really I, I think it's, if you're going to take a class, uh, um, Baking this, class. A baking class. Now's the time to do it when they have access to that milk kitchen. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And, of course, Eli, thank you so much. Eli Hoffman, grill master, five towns waitering. I look forward to doing our next gig. Yeah, I, I don't do know. Something over the summer. Yeah, over the summer. And when I'm not in cooking school, and I'm actually be going to be going to the Kansas City Barbecue Festival, um, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to be joining Yosef Silva and his crew and Mendel Siegel out in Kansas City in a couple of, I guess, August 16th, I want to say. Uh, you are listening to Table for Two uh, with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abelson Hyman. We taste better. Please stay listening to music all the way up until Lichbenching. They are, the music is provided by our friends at Kerem. I just want to wish everybody good Shabbos, a great weekend, happy cooking, and Shabbat Shalom.